Because of my passion for travel and love of sailing the high seas, which includes working on board a major cruise line for up to two months per year, what better way to spend my free time than searching for travel treasures? Hi, my name is Cheryl and welcome to my channel, Beach Cities Thrifting. Join me as I travel throughout Southern California beach cities, checking out thrift shops, estate sales, antique stores, any place that I can find travel items, things made in different countries, souvenirs, or anything that I can flip for a profit in my online stores, such as eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, and Macari. Expect a little bit of travel talk and a whole lot of thrifting. Hey everyone, here we are today in beautiful Huntington Beach, Southern California. We're at the Goodwill. Now usually it's sunny and beautiful, but today it's raining a little bit, but uh, that's okay. So what I'm looking for today, remember, are souvenirs, things made in different countries, or things that I can flip for a profit. So after this, I thought I'd drive down to the pier and show everyone the Huntington Beach Pier on a rainy day. So off we go, let's get started. So when I walked in, the store was really crowded, so I picked the first aisle that didn't have a cart in it. Looking at the shelves, they were pretty full and pretty messy, just the way I like it. So I knew I was going to have to do a lot of digging. I like this tray, but when I picked it up, it was very light and cheaply made. I should be able to leave some of the background music and noise in this video, as long as I don't leave too much of the music. I don't want to upset the copyright gods of YouTube. <laughs> this chicken was so funny, he cracked me up. He kept falling, but I cut that out. Anyway, something from Hobby Lobby, but really adorable. And what's in this box? It's empty. Oops, my bad. These placemats were pretty cool. They were in French, but they were on this weird kind of wood that just seemed so cheap. I like the pictures. The pictures were vintage. How cool is that? But um, not for $3 a piece. Nice bowl, but it was plastic. So now I'm looking on the shelves with all the things made out of metal. Some people find them a little boring, but I have found some really cool things in the metals department. And of course, there are always things that are not metal that you find throughout the store. That little cup, I don't think that lid belonged to that. And I love this, this wire bird candle holder. That was adorable, but I'm looking for travel items. And this little silver thing had a candle in it. <laughs> Don't ask me why I touched it or I smelled it. Oh my gosh, it had no smell. But it had to stay on that shelf with the lid on.
and another empty box. Now I'm in one of my other favorite sections, the coffee mugs. And straight away I found this cute little mug from Ixtapa Zihuatanejo. Zihuatanejo is located in Mexico, just south of Manzanillo, north of Acapulco, and it's one of the ports the cruise ships used to go to many years ago. It's known for its beautiful beaches and wonderful fishing. So definitely had to pop that in my cart. Now let's see what else I can find. So when it comes to looking through clear glass, they can all look alike, but you just keep looking until you see something that strikes your attention. Usually things in color. And these kind of glasses, wine glasses, champagne glasses, you really need to find in pairs of two. I did end up finding these two margarita glasses from Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. For some reason, the video didn't turn out. I do sell a lot of coffee mugs. They're just kind of fun to buy and to sell. Now this mug was really bright and it was from San Francisco, had a little cable car on it. But when I picked it up, it was really, really light. So I think it was pretty cheaply made. But this was absolutely fabulous. Take a look at this mug. It has two handles. I absolutely loved it. Anyway, so I set it back down because I wanted to look it up on eBay to see what the going price was. And uh, it was just the best thing on the shelf. Then I looked next to it and it, this mug said, as I suspected, I was right out along. And then this little Christmas mug. So I just kept going and guess what? I forgot to pick up the black mug. And here, poor Kit, someone donated your coffee mug to Goodwill, oh well. But here is a cute little Peter Cottontail vintage little coffee mug. So I definitely had to put that in my my cart, and that's about, oh, about a $20 fine right there. And next to it, this mug says two people, a horse, and a tough race. Two people, a horse, and a tough race. I have no idea what that means. Maybe that's from a movie? I don't know, but I'm really curious. If you know the answer to that, please put it in the comments below. Oh my goodness, two little mugs. I'm not off to a good start, folks. So I did notice that the Star Wars mug was quite a collector's item, so I decided to put that in my cart. It was worth about $20. And finally, I find something great. It's a moose mug. I actually sell a lot of these. People love these, especially Alaska. 
And believe it or not, the mug right next to it has a moose on the other side as well. I'll show you that. So I've got to tell you the funniest story ever the last time I saw an Alaskan moose. So I was working on the ship up in Whittier, California. My friend and I wanted to go get some coffee at this little place in town. So we looked out the window, we saw a lady walking her moose. So we went over to see if we could get our picture taken with the moose. And the minute I started to take the picture of my friend, the moose started <laughs> relieving itself on the street. So it was hysterical. I'm glad this was just a photo and not a video. Anyway, so when it was my turn, obviously I had to watch where I was putting my feet. But uh, anyway, it was just hysterical. It was so, so funny. Okay, back to thrifting. And on this shelf, there were many bottles that looked like they were from a laboratory. So they're very pretty. I like the pink, but I didn't know if it was a craft item or something that, that had some kind of solution in it from a laboratory. And there are quite a few on the shelf. See, there's some orange ones there. There are the orange ones. And then there's a little shot glass. I like to collect shot glasses and I sell them in small groups of five and six. Now there's a purple one. Also these pretty little crystal candle holders, I believe, were Mikasa. You always have to check and see if there's a name etched on them or written on them. That's what I'm doing right there. More orange. They're glass. More pink and more purple. They're quite pretty, but I surely didn't want to buy them. Here's a moose, but needed a face. And these little tin cups, I don't know, maybe for drinking around the campfire? Empty box and more laboratory glass. Aha, a black stem wine glass. I'm collecting these to get a small little group together to sell. They do better in groups. My eyes immediately went to this purple bowl. It was very heavy. I liked how it felt. Very, very pretty. But when I picked it up and looked on the bottom of it, can you see the bottom is the glass is clear? That means the glass is actually clear. It's not purple glass. It's clear glass that has been flashed or painted with the purple. Now that's fine for the most part, but as time goes on, that purple will wear out and rub off. So for the most part, I leave flash items on the shelf.
so once again, I'm looking to see if there's a maker's mark or a etching or a name on this butter dish. It was really pretty. I, it was heavy glass and I liked it. But you really need a maker's mark or the name of whoever made it to be able to market it and to sell it. Look at these wonderful sushi plates. They were really, really heavy. But look at all the different types of sushi. I'm sure someone would really, really love those plates, but they were just too heavy for me to deal with. And the thought of shipping was just outrageous. And I'm not sure why it's not on video, but if you look in my cart right now, I have a glass vase and it's made in Finland. I have it selling right now for $64 online. So it was another good find. And now on to the plates. Next, I found these corn on the cob holders by Crate and Barrel. These are perfect. They're beautiful, yellow, in good condition, and they're good to sell. Especially if people are thinking about springtime coming up in the next few months with outside barbecues. These are perfect. Always checking for chips and cracks. Oh, look. It's a dreidel dish. It's so colorful, too. I have a friend that just might like that. If not, I'll sell it. Another Cabo San Lucas shot glass to add to my collection. This metal fish was adorable. I kept trying to get away. It wasn't me, it was the fish. Anyway, it was adorable, but not really something I could resell. Probably Hobby Lobby or, and once again it fell. So, okay, get back up there, stay still. Oh, somebody finds it and buys it. It's adorable. I usually don't buy platters, but this was by Gibson, and it was so pretty with, with all these roses. But uh, for some reason, I didn't buy it. But I really should have because I could have made a little bit of profit off of it. No cha-ching there. And this bunny plate was just as cute as ever. And here is a beautiful carnival glass of grapes and leaves. It's very pretty. See the fluorescent? I didn't pick that up because I already have two listed online that haven't sold yet. So I'm going to wait. The reason I'm always looking on the bottom of the, the items just to find names of the companies or people who have made the product is that some companies have higher reputations and have better quality products than others. And of course, also it makes it easier to sell on your online stores because you need to be able to list who the maker is. And by that, that's how people look for the certain products. It's not impossible not to list something without the maker, but it's a lot less work. I want the Easter egg, but resisted. So if I keep talking, we can enjoy a little bit more of this music. So 
So here's the aisle with all the little knickknacks and things. And you never know quite what you might find on this aisle. These glass coasters look like weapons. I just did not like how they felt. This was a souvenir item, but just um, not good quality. Some class comes tonight. My class comes If you're enjoying my video and would like to see more, I would love to have you be one of my subscribers. It's free. All you have to do is touch that red button that says subscribe and then push that bell and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And last but not least, the Christmas aisle. Got to take one more look, maybe for some vintage ornaments or something that we can put away for next year. Empty box number three. At the end of this aisle, I'm going to check out and pay for my, my basket full of goodies. But then we're going to go to Huntington Beach Pier and check it out, see if it's still raining. Also, all the information for my online stores is under the introduction for this video. If there's something you've seen in this video that you can't live without, feel free to email me. The address is there as well. Now let's go to the beach. Okay, there's the pier. It's raining. It's no fun. I'm getting all wet. But there it is. Ah. <laughs> 